All right. So, well, uh, this is changing the default system shell. Uh, well, I'm Rafael Geiser and I'm Lucas Klei. So, why do we want to change the Venus H? Of course, we don't want to just make a change because we had that in this random idea. We want benefits. And what are these kind of benefits? It is not just about speed, like some people say. It is not just about making the boot process faster nor reducing the memory footprint. We actually want a better shell. Well, one of the benefits, of course, is the, is the speed, but it also is stricter and the memory footprint is, a small, is a smaller than Bash and most of the other shells. Mm, the fact that it is stricter is helpful for, for example, for the embedded ports because they actually don't use Bash nor, ba nor Dash. They, for example, Mdebian uses Busybox SH, which is even more strict than Dash. So, uh, about changing the shell, uh, I've been working on uh, filing bug reports to fix bashisms and uh, yeah, mostly uh, about bashisms. I've reported over 800 uh, uh, reports, well, bash, uh, reports, and, uh, and 800 have been fixed, and there are about one, uh, 120 that need to be fixed. And of course, there are some other bashisms that are hidden on the source code of C executables, uh, Perl scripts, Python scripts that use a system call. So how do we detect them? Uh, there's, there are a set of tools that can be used to detect those bashisms and other problems that, can, that will affect our users. One of the tools is check bashisms from the script uh, package. And another tool is lintian, which at the moment only checks the maintainer scripts for bashisms, but there are plans to extend um, these checks to every make file and every bnsh script shipped on the source and binary packages. There are, of course, um, uh, other ways to detect them by making the change and uh, rebuilding the archive and also testing these other pa and these rebuilt packages with few parts. So if they didn't fail and now they fail, well, there's something wrong with it. And of course, uh, we also have the option of users reporting the, those, in the, in those bashisms that we didn't detect. So, well, check bashisms. Uh, its output is more like this. Uh, this is on Debian rules on, of a package. And uh, well, it, so it supports VNSH scripts and even make files. Of course, the make file support is not, uh, it's not as well supported as VNSH on the pure scripts mode, but we are still improving it. So, uh, how do we plan to, ch to make the change? We, are not, we don't want to just divert the BNSH symlink, but we actually want to, to ship the BNSH file on the package itself. And by doing it this way, we are guaranteeing that the, that the file, uh, the BNSH symlink, won't be gone at some random point because of some unknown reason. Currently, Bash is providing the file, and now Dash is also going to provide the file. And the idea is to make Dash the shell interpreter, the BNSH, so that Bash can go away if it is not in, if it is not used, or just keep it for interactive mode, interactive shells. And well, of course, since it is becoming the default shell we need to make it essential and required. Why? Because 
there's no uh, the I mean the default shell cannot be just optional or extra or whatever because because otherwise it, it wouldn't make sense and it wouldn't be the default shell. So what does it represent? The change well the change requires people to stop thinking that BSH is also it's always bash, which is a, an assumption that has occurred on Linux systems for a while. And well, you can actually make, have a choice now. I mean, you are not just stuck on on bash, and because well, people used to to make this uh, assumption that that BSH is always bash and you and write BSH scripts with bashisms, but now since we are working on it, uh, well, most of those bashisms are gone, and you can actually have a choice and use whatever sh policy compliant uh, shell you want. And so there are some people who who don't want Dash. And so for those, here are some options. Uh, one of the options is to dpkg reconfigure Dash, which basically will display the devconf prompt, if not already displayed, and will let you choose whether you want Dash as being a or not. Uh, other way to, another way to have a different BSH is by installing the, the shell you want and use dpkg and divert on it. Uh, there are some people who usually just remove the same link and manually change it, and that's not actually the right way to do it because it might break some systems and as a matter of fact, on batch upgrades, it should warn about that. And well, if you, if you also change your the default BSH, don't forget to change to look at the default uh, user shells. Some other people also wanted to were were wondering why we need to make Dash essential. And well, like I said, the default shell must be essential. Packages don't have and don't need to depend on it. Otherwise it will, I mean, you cannot have some, uh, a default component without it being uh, something essential or some, being something from the, from the very core. And there are of course some hacks around that can be used, like having a, a package called this shell and depending on bash, having an or dependent dependency on bash or dash, but even if that could actually work, it is very likely that at some point it will, it will break, either during a depot strap or during the operates. It is not a, well, it is not an atomic operation, so there might be a chance that it will break. So, about having two shells. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are more than, than two shells on Debian, even on default installations, because a, a, the RAM file system has a, and the init RD file system has a, it uses boosty box. So <laughs> for those complaining about yet another extra shell, there are already more than two. And uh, well, with Dash, mm, it will be the third that will be actually required. And well, we want Dash for being a sage. We don't want to make Dash the default interactive shell. That's not our goal. And uh, for example, uh, by making Dash the default being a sage, they can take out and they can, at some point, a user will be able to remove the Bash and use something else as the interactive in shell without having bash on the system. Uh, well, I actually expected some people to bring up some complaints. <laughs> so if you, ha if you have any complaint, wait a moment. Okay. <laughs> That's what it is about. <laughs> so um, some people, uh, we're concerned about a choice, about having a choice. 
about being able to decide what, and what shell they wanted on their system. So just to clarify, users can still decide what shell they want on their system, what shell they want to uh, be in SH to send link to, to be sent link to. And, uh, some, and you could actually use a circular shell now that we are um, working on, fi you know, on fixing bash systems. And these structure shells will even also be able to work now. I mean, by, by making this change, people will actually be able to use other shells. They are having more freedom than before, because before they could op change the shell and it might break because of bashisms and not many people would care. As, well. Uh, well, some people were wondering about the dependency from bash to dash, well, bash depending on dash, and uh, the thing is that new essential packages are not, are only pulled in by another essential package or by another package. I mean, for example, APT won't automatically install the new essential package just because it is marked as essential. This will be actually a problem, for example, on mixed systems. Uh, for example, if you have a uh, APT using unstable and stable. For example, if a, pa if a package used to be essential on stable and it no longer is on unstable, it will be a, it will be a problem if, a, if, a, if APT automatically installs the new essential packages. So about the users, well, uh, there's a depth conf prompt on upgrades. And so that uh, people who don't want to, who don't want Dash as their business edge can use, uh, during the upgrade process, they can select no, that they don't want Dash as business edge, and that's it. I mean, it's as simple as that. Uh, the DevConf prompt defaults to yes, so that non-interactive upgrades uh, still get a uh, Dash and also on the installation. Uh, yes, and during the installation, also during the installation process, I mean, during Debian install, uh, if you use the ex export mode, you will see the devconf prompt about uh, whether you want Dash as BSH or not. And uh, some people were also wondering what to do about um, massive, um, massive upgrades. For example, if you maintain over 400 servers and you don't want Dash on those 400 servers, how to easily prevent Dash from becoming their business edge? Well, you can always proceed the def prompt, and, uh, but you should always take and be careful because some old installations used to have BNSH as the, the, as the default interactive shell, I mean, login shell of some use of the users. Uh, if people are starting to <laughs> have some questions like, what if I have cron jobs that use bashisms? What if I have custom uh, uh, local scripts that use uh, BNSH on the assumption that it always points to, to bash. Well, there are some choices which are fixing the bash isms, uh, changing the, the shebang. Also, don't, and don't expect that BNSH is always bash when writing new scripts. You can always change that in the default BNSH by using the PKG reconfigure. And there's also a, a command uh, a program called Switch Switch SH, which basically, well, it only works on Linux, but it allows the user to run, for example, a pro, some proprietary software that you, that you that has bashisms and that you cannot modify. It allows you to run it uh, with BNSH as bash, even though on the real system the BNSH is dash or whatever system you want. Uh, uh, Ubuntu made this, the, the change. Many people were complaining because some proprietary software broke. Uh, 
And well, this is a way to work around that problem, even if you, don't, if you want BNSH to be something other than bash. And of course, if the, inter if the login shell def defaults to BNSH, you can also use user mode to change it. And well, some extra points. Dash is, is very small. I mean, the size shouldn't be a, con a concern at all. And even though it is one more essential package, we are actually making, um, forcing people to be more policy compliant. Because, well, Dash doesn't implement all the features, bash, the features that Bash does. So it is a bit stricter to what policy comp uh, requires. It, is al it also provides more freedom because, well, now people should not rely at all. They have no excuse to use bashisms on BNSH scripts. And so you can actually choose whatever shell you want. Well, you should be able to choose whatever shell, shell you want and use it. I mean, you shall not be you should no longer have uh, concerns about bashism and some other stuff. About the squeezy. Well, Dash isn't new. It's been on Debian for, uh, for a long while. Uh, even uh, before it was called Dash, uh, well, at some point it was renamed from Ash to, da to Dash. And actually the code is pretty old. It comes from NetBSD. And well, many people have been using Dash as BNSH. We have all our Ubuntu users and even Debian users. Many, well, many Debian users have been using Dash as their BNSH without much problem. And if we already have a great number of people using Dash as BNSH, we have uh, slightly more people using uh, uh, some other shell, like, uh, uh, well, key SH and others. Uh, well, we have already fixed a lot of bugs, so that should not be a concern regarding the, in the change uh, for Squeezy. And well, even though, if we, even if we make the change now, we are still going to continue working on it ensuring that the systems won't break and uh, it will be as a smooth change as possible. Uh, well, regarding the dependency on, uh, from, uh, from bash to dash and the priority, like I said, it is necessary. And essential packages must be able to work even if not configured. So that's also part of the priority and essential part. And also because extracted doesn't mean unpacked on the bootstrap terms. Because, well, there's a long story behind that. Uh, so if people have any brief question, <laughs> I mean, go ahead. Uh, my quick. It's working. Hello? Uh, my question is about which is the shell used in the build daemon machines? Uh, well, the shell will also be changed to Dash. But it hasn't been changed yet. No, not yet. No, it will, and the build machines will follow whenever they are upgraded. I mean, they, on the build machines themselves, that um, should happen <laughs> until they are uh, upgraded to the next stable release but the chiros should follow the change as soon as, that's, as the new bash package is upgraded. Okay, that's important. That's the, the key factor, I think, to choose the, for packagers uh, and for Lintian and everything, is the key factor uh, to select the shell, I think. Mm, well, Lintian doesn't have much to do with it. <laughs> but, well, yes, I, I've also been working on a, on bashisms, trying to find bashisms on, on Debian rules files. And Lucas Nussbaum also helped uh, by rebuilding the archive with Dash as being a sage. So. No, 
I'm Aurélien. Uh, just a short comment about uh, the auto builders. It's also Dash is also one of the reasons why we switch from e uh, GDPC to eGDPC because uh, with a, a Dash or another shell uh, as a default shell and also as a user shell, uh, it doesn't build, the test suite doesn't run, and according to upstream, uh, a Bash is the only sane shell uh, usable on the system. Uh, sorry? Is Bash still essential? Yes, Bash is still essential and it won't be dropped from essential in, in a while. I mean, that's, uh, some people want, actually want to mm, drop Bash from essential, but the work hasn't started yet, so that shouldn't be a concern either. Bash is not going anywhere <laughs> anytime soon. when they receive a bug, a bug report, uh, are they mm, positive uh, in general? Um, Do you have any statistics? I'm sorry, could you please repeat the question? I yes, um, the reaction yeah. of the uh, maintainer who re receive a bug about uh, a racism uh, is normally positive? Uh, well, does he usually uh, welcome the bug report? Or mm, he maybe thinks, uh, I don't want that to be uh, essential, <laughs> or something like. Uh, well, regarding fixing machisms, uh, maintainers have been very positive in that sense. Um, there have been a couple of people who are not very keen on Dash, so they all they did was um, keep the, uh, change the shebang to, ba to Bash instead of actually fixing the bashism, that's okay also. I mean, that's, an, that's not a problem. I mean, they, having a bashism on a BSH script is incorrect. And if you want to use bash, then change the shebang or otherwise fix the bashism. But uh, those uh, who change the first line of the shell script uh, are mm, aware that mm, later they mm, we have to add a dependency on bus. Um, sorry. Are they really aware? <laughs> but bus is still essential, so currently yes, they but don't it's have essential to. now. Um, yes. In the future, it might not be. Yeah, but that's not a problem at the moment. That's not a problem at the moment. No. No. <laughs> no. Whoever uh, whoever starts working on the on getting bash out of essential will take care of that. But at the moment, this is not r actually related to the change. If, so. um, if they change the shebang line to bin bash, it's easy to, de to detect later. It's more hard to detect when they have been sh and, mm -hmm. and actually want to be it bash because they use some features of it. There's no problem to detect scripts that use bin bash in the shebang line. Yes, it is always easier to, to go from bin bash to, to bin sh. I mean, it is easier to detect the, the, that a script requires bash if the script uses, the, uses bash on the shebang. Um, so, any other question? Yes. I'm Rafael Martinez from Spain. Uh, is it okay? So, <coughs> I'm, I'm, <coughs> I'm a bash user. I don't know anything about Dash, but what, I'm, what I am missing in a shell environment is some primitives of uh, build commands to synchronize and to communicate process. Because from the very early times, uh, for example, the, the C cell from 1970, the only ways to communicate process in a restricted way between father, father and child is the pipe. And the only way to synchronize this process is the wait command. What, what I'm searching, because I'm programming at the application level, is just a common, a synchronization primitive, like semaphore, you know, or a condition variable as the process interface for process communication, uh, 
you know, you, you can read the, the process, the P3 interface, mm -hmm. and you have more primitives to synchronize and uh, you, you are missing in the cell. Is it possible to design a new cell with uh, no so restricted capability to synchronize process? Uh, it's an open yeah. question. Well, yeah, I, I think <laughs> it's unrelated to the switch of the default shell. The user shell can still be whatever. So if you have a shell that supports these things, you can still use that. There is no problem. Stand up, okay, right. Uh, I'd just like to say, uh, this is marvelous. Well done, thank you very much. We've been waiting for this for years, and it's brilliant. Uh, and if you can just get bash out. <laughs> and if you can just get bash out of essential for next time around, that would be even better. <laughs> well, I'm um, actually not the... Uh, well, a lot of people have been working on this for years, uh, so I'm just the one who is trying to push this change, so <laughs> many more people should be thanked. And uh, is there any other question? Uh, somebody, any, no questions via IRC or something? So, when are we making the change? Now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the package is now being uploaded, so... Successfully uploaded. <laughs> so... Well, I would like to thank, in, like I said, to those who originally started working on it, because, well, this been a lot of work has been uh, has been happening on this topic for years, even, I mean, for ages, I could say, and maybe. And well, those who have been working recently on it, the, and those who use Dash. Those who don't use Dash, because those are also the reason why we are changing. And uh, well, also special thanks to the Bash and Dash maintainers, because they were okay with the changes, with making the, with making the change. And even though we are enemying Dash, the maintainer agreed to make the change before. He's currently on back, but he agreed to make the change. <laughs> no, well, you will see a complaint if that We have emails to true. prove it. Yes, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'm uh, not sure. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> well, well, I would also like to thank Debian as a project, as a community, because the change mostly depends on Debian. I mean, it wouldn't make sense if there were no community and no people behind, the, behind Debian. <coughs> so um, thank you all. And uh, well, <laughs> some claps. <laughs> and did you notice the bashy sounds, by the way? <laughs> Somebody? <laughs> there are two bashy sounds. <laughs> yes, and the second one? <laughs> no, the second one, no? All right. Well, check by systems these. <laughs> so here they are. The first one, the double brackets, and the second one is... Uh, missing is dollar. Uh, yes, well, not just the missing dollar, because uh, if you just add the missing dollar, nothing in the variable won't be changed. I mean, you have to, you have to change it. C equals... 
sign out in the dollar sign and the rest. So well, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. And let's get ready. Let's get ready for the next change. Thank you. <laughs>